Oh, it actually closed. Hello guys and welcome back to Tierspec TV. In the comeback video we did earlier this year back in August, we briefly touched the point on the point that my Defender is in need of a restoration effectively. Um, there's quite a lot of rust underneath and it needs things doing to it in order to get it back on the road. Um, so for a bit of context for those of you who don't know or have forgotten, um, about a year ago, or I think September last year it was, I took the decision to take my Defender off the road. In other words, I've deregistered it. There's no number plates on it. Um, not because it doesn't run and drive, it, it can still run and drive and we still have been using it on the channel. Um, but there was two main reasons as to why I decided to do that. One is road tax. Uh, in Denmark, road tax is extremely high on cars, particularly stuff like this old diesel Land Rover. And the second reason for my decision was the MOT or whatever kind of inspection you do every um, couple of years uh, to, to keep a, a vehicle on the road and the fact that my Defender failed this because of rust and a number of other issues and rather um, than continuously patching things up and fixing things in order to get it through its inspection every two years uh, I decided just to take it off the road um, and ultimately if I want to fix it do it properly do it once um, and then get it back on the road but at the time it was just all amounting to a sum of money that simply did not make sense so I decided to take off the road and I've had this Defender for many years now and we've done a lot to it we've done a lot with it um, I've done everything from daily commuting to long motorway journeys to off-roading in mud and snow to using it as a workhorse um, as well as applying a bunch of modifications fixing a bunch of things in that period of time as well and that means that I've got a really good idea really good experience of what I like and what works and what doesn't and what I don't like etc about this defender and what would I change if I had a clean slate now I have a much better idea of what about this what the mods we've applied works and, and what doesn't so today what I want to go do uh, is go through every single modification everything we've done to this defender and talk about what I like about it what I dislike about it and would I change it would I keep it um, if I were to to go and actually rebuild this defender like I might be doing at some point in the future um, so we're just going to do a walk around of the whole Defender basically and go through every, every single thing. Uh, and for that purpose, I have created a list on my phone because I won't be able to remember everything. And we're just going to go from front to back, the inside, and then the sort of mechanical components as well because we won't be able to show everything like the exhaust, for example, or things in the engine, uh, but we can at least talk about it. So starting from the front up here, the de this Defender might actually look quite ordinary. Um, you know, there's no light bars, there's no winch or anything. It looks pretty uh, plain to someone who's not entirely familiar with Land Rovers, but there's quite a few mods going on here. So to start with, we've got the uh, ORE bumper here, which is just the complete classic uh, styled of Defender bumper. It's not a winch bumper or anything like that, um, but it does use ORE's fantastic powder coating system. Um, and I think it might also be a thicker heavy duty steel, I'm not sure. Um, but for sure I'll be putting an ORE bumper back on there. Maybe, uh, oh, I think I would like to go with a winch bumper after this. Um, but any kind of ORE bumper is fantastic. This one has been great for, for what it's done. It hasn't faded or anything like that. If I cleaned it up, it would look as good as new. That's one of the beauties of the ORE powder coating system. Same thing with the steering guard down here which was the first ORE product um, that we fitted to this Defender, I think. And again, it, it looks as good as new when you clean it up. has a few uh, scratches and marks on it as, as a steering guard should. That's what it's there for. Um, but otherwise, looks as good as new. Incredibly, uh, incredible quality. Um, and these tow, ho tow hooks have definitely come in handy once or twice as well. I can say that for sure. So the steering guard will definitely be staying or going back on, however you want to say it. And likewise, um, I'll be putting, I think, an ORE winch bumper on there as well. I think a winch is something uh, I've needed, wanted for a while. Um, then moving up, lights. So right now I've got some um, Halo LED lights, which I got from Tough Rock, who are sadly no longer in business. 
Um, but these lights, uh, they look great when the ring is illuminated. Um, that's become quite a trend, I think, in the Land Rover world over the last few years. Um, and I had a previous pair of uh, halo lights before this one, and then it fitted these, which are much brighter than the ones I had before. But yes, these came from Tough Rock. Um, and although they're great, they look great, and they are very bright, um, I know RRE, to talk about them again, um, offers some, I think the brand is called LRPTZ or something like that, uh, which is a German make of lights, um, and they do a, a Defender headlight as well with a sort of, um, not a halo pattern, but another sort of, you know, fancy photogenic uh, LED pattern as well. And they're supposed to be incredibly bright, uh, from what I've heard, uh, comparable even to LED light bars, um, and also very durable as well, from what I know. Still not gone through, it's just marked it. So we'll come back to this later because I'm going to find a bigger hammer. So I'd probably be swapping them out for those just because I've heard so many good things from about them, uh, about them just uh, both from ORE themselves, but also uh, people have actually fitted them. Then uh, these are also not standard. These are LED lights as well. So they look like the standard Defender lights, which is obviously the point, um, but they are LEDs. So they're brighter, um, will last longer, etc. Again, no reason not to keep those, so they'll just be staying. The headlights, surrounds, and grill, completely standard Defender look. Probably just stick with that, to be honest. I quite like keeping it fairly uh, standard. I, I want to keep it as like a classic looking Defender. And like I said, that's part of the thing with this. If I do go through a whole restoration, I have a better idea of what I want this Defender to be and what things I want on it. Um, and I, I kind of want to go for a uh, a little bit more of a minimalistic or simplistic build, I think, compared to maybe what I've done here where I've tried lots of different things. Um, and part of that would be keeping a bit more of a classic Defender look, but with some modern twists, let's say, like a winch bumper on there. Moving up to the bonnet, we have the, we've got some black uh, checker plating, which, you know, is partly for looks, just because it ties in nicely with all the other black elements, wheels, bumper, etc. Um, but is quite a useful thing. I do actually tend to climb up on the top of this quite often, whether that's to mount cameras for YouTube videos, um, or just to sit up there, or to put the Christmas tree up there when we go and get that every year, and so on. Um, and it's nice to have these to, to give you a bit more grip when you're standing up on the bonnet. So either I'd just be keeping this or something like this black checker plating on there. I know RRE do, um, do their own checker plating now, which has some, I think, anti-slip material, which I think is military or tank derived. Um, uh, ORE do love their military tie-ins. Uh, so potentially I'd go with the ORE alternative as well, uh, just because I'll be going with a lot of ORE products. Um, we are brand ambassadors for them after all, um, and I, I know how high quality those will be. Um, and then I guess we have uh, bonnet vents. So we have these KBX as they're known uh, bonnet vents, one on each side, uh, although in reality, I guess most of you know this, one of them is actually, only one of them is actually functional. So you have the one on that side, I think it is, that goes into the heater matrix. Uh, and this one, the standard piece on a Defender is actually just a blank plate. It's just there for symmetry. Um, or in this case, I think this just goes directly to, into the uh, engine bay. So it does feed some air into the engine. I guess you could argue. But I think what I'm actually gonna do, especially if I'm gonna go for a winch bumper, um, I've already bought the Mud Stuff, uh, no, it's not Mud Stuff, it's from the Mud Stuff website, but I think it's a German make. Um, they do basically a cubby box that you put in here and it's sort of this deep or something like that. Um, you can put in here and you can fit uh, like a switch, um, power switch for the winch um, and also a I don't know what the correct term is it for it is, uh, but you can fit a sort of, what do you call it, like a shortcut to the battery. NATO socket. NATO socket, thank you. Uh, a NATO socket, which basically gives you a shortcut to the battery if you need to jump start someone, for example, or be jump started. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, battery access is something we'll get onto. Um, that, that's something I've already bought is that cubby box. So I just fit that there, the other side, I don't know what I would put in there, snow cowl or another kind of vent, basically. Um, but probably getting rid of these in favor for the um, more functional alternative uh, of the cubby box, which Nissa actually has on his V890. Uh, so maybe you've seen that before, but it's a really, really nice mod uh, to have if you have a winch bumper. Moving down, let's have a look at wheels. Devante uh, Terra 
Explorers for tires, all-terrain tires. Uh, been really happy with those for what I've used them for. Uh, have done a review with my experience of, experiences of them. Um, and Davanti are relatively new to the market, um, but they are they do sponsor and are endorsed by uh, multiple time Defender Challenge champion, Ed Cobley, who we've had the pleasure of working with a couple of times. Um, and yeah, I mean, if they're endorsed by someone like him, I'm very happy to have them on my Defender. So that's what I'm gonna carry on using for now. I have considered um, maybe putting this on with some chunkier tires, lifting it up again, like Nissa's V890. Um, but I think going back to what I said before, I'd rather keep it as a more classic looking Defender rather than beefing it up too much, even though that would be cool. Um, I still wanna use it sort of in a uh, you know on the road in a bit more of a practical sense as well. Um, then the sawtooth uh, alloy wheels, maybe not the most practical wheels, the alloys um, for an uh, for a, uh, an off-road vehicle, um, and they will get sort of chipped and scratched and whatever, but I don't care. But anyway, one of my favourite Defender um, wheels out there, um, and I've, something I'd wanted for a long time, and I love the way these look, even if they're more associated with the more modern Defender. Uh, this is a 1999. Defender, um, I still think they look really, really cool. And yeah, I'll just keep using those for now, I think. What about up here? We've got, I mean, this is technically a modification, just plastic covers on the, um, I don't know what you call this, the hinge, the windscreen hinge. Um, yeah, I just put plastic covers on them because one of them was unpainted and I just decided to cover it up with these plastic things I found online. So. <laughs> I don't know, I probably, if I'm gonna replace the whole bulkhead and everything, I guess this would be repainted and that becomes redundant. So yeah, technically it's a mod, so I wanted to mention it. Also on here is a new windscreen washer jet. I can't tell you the brand of that off the top of my head, um, but if anyone wants to know, I can probably put it down in the comments below. Um, but that, it, it's, it's strange because that windscreen washer jet, although it is one of the, probably one of the most basic functions within it that you expect in a road car, that is probably one of my favorite modifications to this Defender because if you daily drive a Defender or just drive it on the road um, in, any kind of regular sense, you will know how crap the standard windscreen washer is on a Defender. So having something like that, that sprays uh, uh, windscreen wash all over the windscreen properly, it's a really nice thing to have, especially when you have, uh, when you get mud on the windscreen and things like that. Going back down to the side, um, mud flaps, that's a pretty standard thing on all Defenders, or you don't have to have them, but um, around here where it gets like pretty filthy just from driving around the farm. Uh, mud flaps is a very nice thing to have. And right now I've got tough, the Tough Rock uh, Tear Spec TV mud flaps. So the Tough Rock mud flaps with the Tear Spec TV logo on. Um, yeah, I'll probably just keep using those to be honest. Uh, like I said, sadly Tough Rock is no longer in business, but um, there's no reason I can't keep using these mud flaps. Previously I had the standard Land Rover mud flaps on here um, and they are very stiff and break pretty, pretty easily when you go off road. Um, if they flex too much, they just crack. Um, and I think I went through two pairs of standard Land Rover mud flaps before fitting the Tough Rock ones, which have a lot more flex in them. So just keep using those. Um, that means also, actually not on the front, but yeah, you, if you have these, you'd have the Tough Rock brackets as well, um, which I think are stainless steel. Uh, highly recommended um, because standard ones rust, unsurprisingly. Um, the reason I say I don't have those on the front is because I have the Gwyn Lewis Mud Shield kit, which is actually the next mod I wanted to talk about anyway. The, the Gwyn Lewis Mud Shield kit basically gives you a bunch of, it's sort of mud flaps, but to go inside the wheel arches if you like. It just patches up all of those gaps that you get in defenders, um, all of those holes that mud can be and salt can be flung into, those gaps in the chassis, um, and basically just gives you like a solid wheel arch all the way down to here um, so that the, the mud and salt hopefully stays to a, a slightly more confined space. And that's all around here um, and all around the rear as well. So you can actually see how it fits. Um, I can, we can show it after, but it actually extends out down here. So it actually extends beyond, it's almost like a second mud flap um, there as well. And that is, again, it's something that seems a bit boring in comparison to winches and tires and things. Um, but, you know, things like windscreen washer, um, better, um, you know, underbody, 
protection from mud and things like that is it's a really really nice thing to have and I really like that mod probably too little too late with my defender in terms of protecting the chassis um, but a really cool thing to 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 be able to try out um, and definitely something I'd want to have in the future even if you're going for a, a galvanized chassis which should be a lot more durable um, it also makes it cleaning it um, a bit easier in theory as well because like I said you you can find the mud to a smaller space. I think down the side, pretty much all standard. Um, those, that's not the standard badges. These are 3D black badges I put on, so it just looks a bit smarter, um, but not standard. These aren't the original hinges either. Um, they're standard Defender hinges um, that I've just painted. I think they were galvanized, um, which I've just painted with hammerite, so they are black. Um, because that's easier than trying to color match to this and actually looks pretty cool in black to contrast this and match with everything else. Um, whether I go for some sort of optimal, super expensive hinges, I don't know. Um, it, again, it's one of those things that it's very expensive, but probably long term is a good thing to have. Um, and if you're going to do a whole restoration then or rebuild, then you know what's an extra 200 pounds or 300 pounds or whatever they cost um, so yeah potentially I'd go with those sort of upgraded hinges um, and I think these have stainless steel fittings as well which again is a really nice thing to have because of well you should have seen the way that we had to remove the original hinges that was a lot of uh, soaring and swearing I'm sure um, not an easy thing to do um, so yeah possibly upgraded hinges there possibly heated mirrors I don't know um, but I think pretty much standard going down here so I think we need to move down to the rear and you can see just to point out the mud shield the Gwyn Lewis mud shield kit kind of sticking out there as well so you can see it basically kind of extends um, the inner wheel arch lining as well but I think we need to come around to the back now for the next bit on the rear we have what well, we don't technically have ORE wheel carrier which is lying over here right now so the ORE wheel carrier is down there. It's not on the Defender at the moment, and I think some of you have asked why it's not there or why I've taken it off, and that's nothing to do with it, with me not being happy with it. Um, the truth is I originally took it off because I wanted to treat the cross member after I, uh, for those that you don't know, this is not the original cross member. We replaced it, and I took the wheel carrier off because I wanted to treat the cross member. Um, I never got around to doing that, and at this point it seems a little bit pointless. Um, also so when I'm driving, you know, I can't drive this on public roads, I'm only driving it around the farm. I don't really need a spare wheel on the back when I'm never more than like two kilometers from home or from the workshop. Um, so I can put the wheel bar carrier back on. Um, I've got, it, it's the best wheel carrier on the market by far. Um, and I've got nothing wrong, nothing bad to say about, about it at all. Um, yeah, I just don't really need to have it on at this moment, um, but just so you know, I didn't take it off because there was anything wrong with it. Um, definitely not the case. Um, but just wanted to point it out because that is something, if I was going to rebuild, obviously I'd put back on and have a spare wheel back on there as, as well. LED lights again, all of these are LEDs like the front. Again, just may as well keep that. Mud flaps and brackets, so got the same Tough Rock um, extra fl flexible mud flaps with stainless steel brackets and stainless steel fittings. And these have been on for I don't know, a good few years now. Um, and again, if you just gave those a clean, they'd look as good as new. Uh, same with the fittings. So that's what we like. Um, I think that's it on the rear, isn't it? There's nothing else that's not standard on there, is there? So I think with that, we need to go to the interior. So moving on to the interior, um, first thing when you open the door, is these uh, kick plates right here. A few of you have asked where I got those and I got them off of eBay. I don't know what brand or yeah, who makes them. Quite frankly, I got them off eBay. I just saw them and thought they'd be cool to have. And you can see they're actually quite nice things to have because when you go off-roading, stuff like that happens. You get quite a lot of muck uh, on the door and you can just, this is just uh, metal, so you can just wash it off quite easily. Um, and it looks a bit cooler, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, I keep that, keep something like it at least on the door as well. It's actually quite a cool thing to have. Um, the door in general, doors in general, are a bit of a disaster. Um, we can call these, I think, uh, racing lightweight doors because there's a lot of holes in the bottom, which I don't dare show you. You can catch a glimpse of it there. So I think all the doors need to replace the door cards as well. I know there's things you can do with door cards um, in terms of 
I don't know, different, you can get different colors. You can get fancy ones with contrast stitching and whatever you want. Um, but yeah, it's just a standard door card. And the door cards on this Defender are a disaster, completely falling apart. There's bits of trim missing. I actually had quite a funny moment a few weeks ago when I was filming um, where I was mounting a GoPro on the outside of the Defender. Um, the window is open and there's a piece of plastic trim which goes along this edge here just to keep it smoother, I guess, and to give the window something to rub up against. And when I closed the door, because you have to slam it so hard, that thing actually just like jumped out of the window and fell on the ground. Um, so yeah, that's the other thing. The latches and locks are a bit of a disaster as well. The driver's door, you have to slam incredibly hard like so hard that it's almost embarrassing to do it with other people around because they think you've just had a really bad day and you're just slamming your car door um, so that needs to be sorted out the latches need to be sorted out the locks as well um, sometimes don't want to lock you can see how loose this is if you've ever had to change uh, or, or fit the door card and change the the lock you know kind of set up you'll know how much of a pain in the backside that is uh, so I don't look forward to doing that going from there to the actual interior um, down here we've got the RE corner protectors which I fitted last year um, so again it uses the RE powder coating system etc um, which uh, keep just keeps it looking nice so it's a bit mucky at the moment but again uh, looks good as new it won't that won't fade um, it shouldn't corrode anything like that um, and if you have a Defender that is, has uh, done as much mileage and is as old as this one, you're probably familiar with the, um, the wearing away you get at the corners of these seat boxes. Um, so they just start to get holes in them and that covers it up. Uh, and hopefully you won't be wearing that metal away and uh, makes it look a bit smarter and holds it all together. So a nice little thing to have. And for sure, I'll be keeping that. What do we talk about next? Uh, let's go with seats seats this is one of the big things for me and i think when i talk about simplifying this defender a bit and and some of the biggest changes i want to make i think are relating to the interior because there's a few things i want to change in here one is the seats so these came from powerful uk i think they are known um, they are heated seats so they have a heating element in them um, but these seats are something I would definitely want to change. They are genuinely very comfortable. I find these really comfortable. They're, they're a bucket style seat, which to some people might seem ridiculous to have like a sport seat in a Defender, but actually in a Defender, you want something with a lot of side bolstering um, because they roll a lot, obviously. And if you go off road, you're going to get thrown around a lot as well. So having something that actually holds you in place is really nice relative to the standard Defender seats, which definitely don't. So I do honestly find these seats very comfortable especially considering they were cheap um, the downside of them being cheap is one uh, the heating in them is either uh, so hot it's uncomfortable or not warm enough uh, for you to actually be able to feel it so those are the only two settings so the heating is yeah um, a bit pointless and then the, the my biggest issue with them is how they're fitted um, so the battery is down here under the driver's seat obviously or on the left hand side if you're in the UK um, and to remove these seats there are just four screws you need to undo and you need an allen key um, to or allen key type socket to to get at them and, and undo them um, it's not that it's particularly difficult to get them off it just takes five minutes or so and you've got to have the right tool in the vehicle etc um, whereas the standard defender you can just pop the seat off in one second and you have access to the battery or if you have the sparko seats like nissa has in his v8 you just have those thumb screws which you can just do by hand very very quickly um, so getting into the battery in this defender is a real pain because you've got to take the whole seat out and you've got to undo those four screws uh, which also means taking the center seat out and it's just a bit of a faff um, so I'm glad I tried these seats out. I don't regret putting them in or anything. Uh, glad to have experienced it, but I definitely want to change these, uh, possibly for the Sparco seats that Nissa has, or maybe something from Exmoor Trim, if I really want to go pricey, because Exmoor Trim are the best in the business um, at that. And uh, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely want to change those out for something else. And I'm not bothered about having heating in them anymore. Uh, when I put these in, this Defender was my daily. So maybe heated seats was a nice thing to have. I don't really care anymore. I'd be happy just to have some standard seats. But something I would like is to have a kind of sporty style seat with some bolstering, because uh, they are comfy. 
Then speakers, so we've got the, these are not standard speakers, as you can tell, they are rather thick. I think the standard ones don't come out much more than a centimeter from the dash. Um, so uh, uh, talking about simplifying, that's something else I'm not that bothered about anymore, is having things like upgraded speakers. Um, you know, when I use this Defender now, or when I have used it in the past couple of years, it's more for fun, um, you know, taking out in nice weather, or taking out in the snow, or taking out off-roading. It's not a daily or anything like that. I'm not really listening to music in it or listening to the radio. Um, so I'd rather simplify the setup. Uh, I don't need to have, you know, fancy, fancy speakers, fancy radio, anything like that. So uh, I guess it, you can just put these back in if you're going to restore it. It's like there's no point in getting rid of them. Um, but uh, I did have a subwoofer behind the driver's seat as well. Um, again, something I'm really not bothered about having anymore. I don't want wires everywhere. Um, I don't want, you know, more things that can go wrong. So I'd rather simplify it. Um, the speakers are good. Uh, the Ground Zero speakers, I think, um, they're good, but I'm just not that. Like, if I was going to do this again, I wouldn't be bothered about put it, putting upgraded speakers in, to be quite honest. Um, up here, it's, I mean, technically not a modification because uh, it's a standard Land Rover part, but we fitted the uh, genuine TD5 rev counter up here. Um, so it's a genuine, you know, uh, factory option, uh, but not something that this Defender came with, which we fitted last year. Um, really nice thing to have though, and it looks really cool with the little TD5 logo. Yeah, definitely be keeping that. Oh, we can talk about this, Defender the misters. Um, so this was one of the earliest kind of modification videos we ever did actually, was Defender D misters. So normally you don't have these kind of bulges coming out of the dash here, but these just help to direct air to the, um, you know, the center of the windscreen and to the side windows for demisting them um, in cold weather or any weather, which is a nice thing to have as well and takes two seconds to install um, and they do work. So I would be keeping those. Oh, it actually closed. Uh, let's go around to the other side. I think actually you go here and I'll go around to the other side. <laughs> Because in the center, we have the Mud Stuff center console, um, which is something I kind of regret fitting, if I'm being completely honest. Um, because in order to fit this, you need to cut up the whole dash. So if you remove this now, there's basically just a big gaping, very jaggedy hole in the middle in order to fit this and fit the radio and the wires and everything in there. Um, I think nowadays I'd rather have the standard Defender dash where you just have the tray going all the way across and maybe a radio, but even that I'm not too fussed um, as long as I can just charge my phone and have it mounted up here. I'm not that bothered. Um, so I think I have two options in terms of how I would do this in a rebuild and that's either to just fit, redo this uh, mud stuff dash uh, and just make it look a bit tidier and maybe fit, uh, make the most of it and fit a big unit here which supports uh, Apple CarPlay so I can connect my phone to that or you replace the entire dash, but that means getting a whole unit, whole dash unit from another Land Rover, which will be an expensive and big job, but mostly expensive. Um, so that could go one of two ways, I don't know. But um, yeah, just um, something I kind of regret doing because it's one of, the mod one of the few modifications on this Defender that isn't reversible, um, and that's this because there's, like I said, there's a big hole underneath in the dash. Um, and then this as well, which is just a bit of a gimmick, uh, is, you can't even see it, there you go. There's some green, oh, there we go. There's some green lighting going on here, if I turn that off. Um, yeah, this was something we just fitted as a bit of fun, some mood lighting. So there's just some LED strips up in the dash and down here. And I used to have some in the doors as well. Um, bit of fun, bit of a, a party trick, um, but ultimately going back to simplifying, it's not something I need. Um, and it was just a, a kind of a bit of fun for a, a YouTube video effectively. Um, but the kind of thing that I would just remove now if I were to rebuild it, you know, less, fewer wires, fewer things to, to worry about, etc. And I think that's it. Let me check my list. We also have actually the ORE cargo guard, which we're very proud of because we helped ORE develop that. Um, so in here in Denmark, having a guard behind the driver's seat in a, a utility vehicle like this is a legal requirement. And we helped ORE develop a sort of more usable version. So the, this uses the military, I think it's called Moller. Yeah, Moller. Um, uh, mounting systems, you can mount like 
tools, a first aid kit, um, things like that, uh, tow ropes to it, etc. Um, and you can now, you can cover this whole section with these panels if you wanted. Uh, in Denmark, it's only a legal requirement to have one behind the, the driver's seat. Um, and you can get it in other markets. I mean, if you live in the UK and you want this, you can fit it. It's just not a legal requirement in the UK. Um, we just thought it'd be cool to, to make something out of that because a lot of you are asking about why do you have a guard behind the driver's seat and where can I buy one? Because it's kind of a useful thing for if you can actually mount stuff to it. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely be keeping that because it's RE, so I know the quality will be fantastic and we help develop it, so it'd be a bit weird if we didn't use it. And then I think it's just a matter of coming into the back um, where there's only really one thing to talk about. So you can get a better view of the cargo guard up there for a start. Um, but the only other thing that's actually modified in here technically is the flooring. So um, this flooring came from Exmoor Trim. Uh, I think it's supposed to be I don't know if it's supposed to be acoustically sound deadening something something um, possibly uh, it will soften the sound a bit obviously compared to having bare metal in here underneath it is just bare metal um, so the floor is great it fits perfectly um, it's all mucky at the moment but easy to clean it's just a rubber floor the sides are a bit annoying um, firstly you need to shape them to the correct shape and that's not Exmoor Trim's fault that's Land Rover's fault because every single defender on the planet is different um, so you need to cut it out to the right shape uh, which takes some time and then the other thing is the the way they're mounted so the the supplied method is velcro strips so you can see them down there um, it's supposed to velcro so that if you want to remove it for I don't know cleaning say you just go you just rip it up uh, and it velcros off that doesn't stick very long <laughs> because it's just not sticking um, which is I mean it's fine it just means that you get this like gap and it's loose which is a bit annoying um, yeah it is what it is I think if you want to use this properly you need to glue it down basically uh, otherwise you're gonna have this like sagginess uh, in it but the actual product like the actual material rubber material is is great so i'm happy with that let's see and then i think the only other thing i haven't mentioned is all the mechanical bits um, which is a bit harder to show so i'm going to go through the ones i can remember at least and that is the straight through exhaust um, so we took the center silencer out on this defender so the exhaust is straight through just with a box uh, on the very back here um, which gives it a much nicer, throatier noise. And I think it's something that, God, I think the majority of Land Rover enthusiasts with TD5s have done that. I think it's the most, one of the most common um, things to do to a TD5. So I don't think that needs too much explaining. And um, yeah, I'd be carrying on with that, uh, keeping that. Um, fortunately, this Defender is from 99. It's the first year of TD5 production, which means that it was before they fitted the catalytic converters to these. I think that was after 2001 or 2002 that they started fitting catalytic converters to these. Um, and I think removing that and putting a straight pipe in is more complicated in terms of legality uh, and the law and going through inspection, especially here in Denmark. I think they're cracking down on removing catalytic converters. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. Um, so fortunately, I think I can have a straight through exhaust with this and nobody can tell me that I'm not allowed to, whereas if I had, say, a 2004 TD5 and I took that out and put it straight through an exhaust in, that could get me in trouble, unfortunately. Slick shift, that is technically on the inside, sort of on the inside, which is on top of the gearbox and goes into the interior. Um, and that is the synchro gearbox's slick shift, which basically reduces the sort of distance between gears or gives you a much tighter feeling gear shift um, compared to the standard Defender gear shift, which feels like you're fishing. Um, it's a fantastic mod, one of my favorites, probably one of my, you know, five must-haves um, for a TD5 Defender. For, I'll be for sure keeping that. And again, Synchro Gearboxes is another a brand that you can just guarantee uh, high quality from always. Then the remap, so I'm running a stage two storm tuning remap. Um, so it should be running about 180 horsepower. Um, that is technically just the ECU that has been replaced. So it's just the box under the uh, passenger seat. Um, it's so, you know, in terms of fitting it or not fitting it, that's kind of a no brainer. Um, there's no real downside to it. 
in that sense. Um, obviously, there are some things that need to be done in order to be running that remap. So the exhaust is one of them. Uh, the Cirque Motorsport uh, intercooler is one of them. Um, I don't think it's entirely necessary with the Stage 2. Um, I was running the defend this Defender for quite a while with the standard setup before I fitted the intercooler, but the intercooler is a nice thing to have for peace of mind. Um, and it's just a it's just bigger, so I may as well just keep running that as well. Oh, EGR blank, that's something I actually didn't write on the list. Uh, EGR blanking as well, so that's exhaust, uh, the blanking off of the exhaust gas recirculation system. Um, by doing so, you get better performance, cleaner engine, and enables you to have a remap uh, as well. Um, in terms of how legal, legal that is, um, I, I don't know, like I think here, I, I think it varies on who you ask in terms of your MOT or your, you know, your local inspection version. Um, some people will not notice it at all or, you know, if you don't know Land Rovers, you probably won't know that the EGR has been blanked off. Um, so you, you can't really tell unless you know to look for it. So no one's going to question it. Uh, steering damper. I've changed the steering damper for a terra firma one. The only reason we changed that was because I had an awful death wobble, as it's known, uh, on this Defender a couple years back, and we just replaced pretty much everything steering related to see what would fix it, and the steering damper was one of them. I think for, for steering damper and for the shock absorbers, I'll go with the Old Man Emu kit. Um, Old Man Emu are kind of the best in the business, as far as I know, for that kind of thing. Um, so I just go with an Old Man Emu kit all around for the shock absorbers and the steering damper. Then uh, another Gwyn Lewis mod they're, that they're probably best known for is their drop arm conversion kit and sumo bar kit. Fantastic uh, high quality kit. Um, so the drop arm on uh, these defenders is notoriously awkward um, if you need to replace it and the conversion kit replaces it to the Disco 2 type which is just miles easier to, to replace when you need to replace it, makes it so much easier. Um, so the, I would definitely be keeping that, uh, it's a much better setup. Uh, same with the sumo bars, it basically replaces all of the steering bars underneath for much, much, much beefier and high quality, more high quality uh, uh, counterparts. Um, again, be keeping that. Flowflex bushes, so all of the bushes underneath with the suspension components, trailing arms, etc., are the Flowflex, is it polyurethane uh, variants uh, rather than the standard rubber ones, which have a tendency to um, wear out and crack much more quickly. Um, so, yeah, I think by the time we come to a rebuild, maybe just for the sake of it when we're already there, I'll replace all the bushes again just to renew them. Um, but I have been running the Flowflex ones for a while now, and they've been great. Um, I, as far as I know, they're not showing any signs of, of wear. And then lastly that I have on the list is the LOF clutch. Um, so I am running an LOF I think it's called the power spec clutch, um, which we replaced a couple years ago. Um, and LOF, best Land Rover clutches out there, or gearbox uh, components. And uh, yeah, the, the, because of the remap, uh, the clutch got to a point where it's starting to slip. So rather than replacing it with the standard Land Rover clutch, obviously went with the um, LOF one, which is much more suited to a, a power upgrade like I am running now. Um, and that, frankly, it hasn't done probably more than a few thousand kilometers, if that. Um, yeah, no, probably like a few thousand kilometers um, because I fitted it, we fitted it not that long before I took the Defender off the road. Um, so it's still relatively new. And then we've also got, it's got a Disco 2 uh, transfer box set up on it as well, which is just more suited to, you know, on-road cruising type work. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just be keeping that. That's just the internal components of the transfer box. I think that is absolutely everything we've done to the Defender. Is there anything else I've missed? I don't think so. So I think that's every modification, every little change we've made. Uh, obviously there's some other things in there as well, like replacing some standard parts, like the steering box we replaced, but that's just completely standard Land Rover parts. Um, and other little things like that. But everything that's actually been modified from factory, from how this was at factory, um, has been mentioned, I believe. Um, so that's kind of the, the thought, the, how we say this, the, the mindset I'm going with in terms of rebuilding this, the things I would change and keep. Um, actually, another thing I've just thought of is work lights. So I actually have some work lights from ORE, um, which I've had for a while and not fitted. And that's something I would like to have on the back as well. Um, something I would actually get a good use out of. 
um, but just haven't fitted them because it's a bit pointless to be putting modifications on this Defender if I am potentially going to rebuild it down the line um, and it is, you know, it's falling apart in places, it's kind of crumbling. Um, how far I go with a restoration, I don't know. You know, do I just lift up the body, put it on a galvanized chassis? Bish bash bosh, I don't know. Um, or do you go full nut and bolt restoration, respray everything, which is obviously the most expensive option, um, but probably the most satisfying and best for long term? I don't know. My fear is if I went all out respray everything, I'd almost be afraid to use it, I think. Um, I quite like that the Defender is a bit rough because you know I'm driving around a lot on dirt roads, off road, using it as a workhorse. So it makes sense to keep it a bit rough and not be worried about, I don't worry about the paint and things like that or getting it dirty or whatever, because I mean, look at it. Um, I basically just want to fix structural things. I want to have a solid chassis and solid doors and things like that so that I don't need to worry about them. But the thing is, if you're putting on you know, new doors and a new bulkhead, you've got to paint those things anyway. And then do you just do the whole car? Um, so there's a lot to think about. Definitely be putting it on a galvanized chassis and galvanized bulkhead. And I think I will have to replace the doors um, because the front doors are not in a good way. Um, and then uh, mechanically, it's in good shape. I think the engine has done over 300,000 kilometers now, um, but it's been pretty well looked after, serviced regularly and so on. Um, and we've done a lot of work to it. Same with the gearbox. Um, so mechanically, it's, it's in a good shape. Um, it's, it's more the structural side of things that we need to work on and figure out what the best way of doing that is one more honorable mention, ORE's uh, rear step as well. ORE have just uh, uh, developed a rear step for the cross member as well, which goes all the way across. Um, so things like that, I think I'll be going all out with some ORE products um, because we do rather like our ORE products here. So things like that as well, I'll be putting on um, and I'm sure there'll be other things I think of along down the line as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any ideas for things I should and shouldn't do to this defense in the case of a rebuild. Um, leave it down in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.